This is Steve 87th to you talking to you today about part two on building an auger. All right, everybody, time to get back to work. So I'm going to put you guys back on the little pedestal here. Okay. Um, and I am actually going to go back on YouTube and watch some more YouTube. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set up to go ahead and solder all these things. So I think while I'm doing that, I will put you guys on a time lapse so you don't have to watch everything that I do, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do is put all of the pieces together in one by one and then solder them up. Um, so it's kind of more like welding than soldering because I have to get enough solder in between the two areas. I start with the boxes. Once I got the boxes done, I actually did the screws by putting some stuff on the screw and then heating it up and then put the frame on. So this was all the soldering that I did at this point in time. All right, so this is the first, it's not quite completed. I still have to, to run a motor up here um, and another kind of cable and a cable that comes off of there. But you can see it's got the wheels. It's got the auger bit there. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little um, off kilter right now. And what I'll wind up doing is, um, since there's more stuff that's going to go on top of this, hopefully I'll be able to add some more weight down on the bottom. Um, if not, um, I'm sure I can get some weights in there somehow. Um, to make it so that it'll stay. But that's kind of what it looks like. So that's one of them. I just got to clean it all up and paint it. And like I said, put a few more things on it. Alrighty then. So we're back to working. Yay. Um, yeah, it took a little bit of time off. So my first one I didn't quite get right. My second one has come out a lot better. And um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and solder these over here together. I'm just trying to figure out how I can do that. Um, can't use this because these are rubber. Those are plastic. I don't believe I have any metal metal ones that I can actually use. So we're gonna heat up the uh, soldering iron and let's see what we can do about getting these together. This one, so um, there's some things that I can do to change this to make this a little bit better. This was my first one. You can see I put the wheels on, on the top of it when they should have actually been on the bottom. This is actually a little bit too far back um, to make that right. Um, and I also looked at my picture a little bit. I, it, I'm not really exactly the way that it was, um, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. And I still have to figure out how I'm going to do the gearbox. I've already kind of figured out how I'm going to do the gearbox up to the top. Um, and then I also found out that I've got to change the top portion of this a little bit too, which that'll be okay. Um, we've got a few things I got to do, but it's fine. Come on. Okay. 
That's not on. Why is that not on? Okay, now that I've figured out how to actually run a soldering iron, now I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of these pieces on. So I've already soldered on the solid troughs and things like that. Now I have to try to solder on the arms. So I finally got the arms. What I did was is I kept bending and bending to get the arms to actually kind of clamp into where I'm at. So I put a little flux on there so that, to, so that the solder would reach in there a little bit more. Now it's a little bit harder to solder on the brass uh, than it is to do like wires or something like that, stranded wires or anything. You really need to take your time and heat up the area that you're dealing with a lot more. So with that in mind, I actually am, the, the soldering iron itself is actually hotter. Um, I forget exactly where I set it at, but I set it at a higher temperature. And then the big thing is that the way soldering irons are supposed to work is the solder is supposed to get hot, melt, and then flow to the greatest heat. So in this case, what I'm trying to do is solder, put the solder on the one side so it will flow underneath onto the other side. Um, that didn't quite work all the time. So basically what I wound up doing was almost welding to where I could get a pool of the solder over there and then I would just move the soldering with the soldering iron, move the solder around um, in a welding type fashion. Once I got those tacked up, um, you can see still having a little bit of a problem. Uh, and it takes a lot to get the, the heat in there in some cases, especially since it transfers all the way up and down the item. So uh, you can see there, finally got the solder on and it held it. And that's those two. Uh, just come in here with some snips. This is where you definitely don't want piano wire. The brass is nice because it's softer and makes it easier, a little bit easier to cut. Okay, this is a real soft piece of brass tubing that I'm trying to straighten out. It's a little bit softer than I wanted to but I needed to try to get it straight so that I could then figure out how we're gonna bend it and how I could manipulate this. So that's what's going on right now. So the one thing that I do wanna to try to do, let's see how tight of a corner I can make this bend. Um, and there is a reason behind that. I know it sounds really weird, but uh, I do wanna bend this to make it look like there is a 90 here because up here there isn't going to be a 90 it just goes into a transfer box that goes straight down so that'll make it easier i am just looking for my bendy tools so let's just see if we can't do this and how tight of a bend i can make and that's the big thing is i want Really like to have a nice tight, tight bend. And yeah, that's not gonna do. Nah, it's just not gonna look right. Okay. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and right where these guys are, we're gonna go ahead and put in a transfer box. Actually, we'll put them right here. So that he is kinda set up. Okay, so anyway, we're going to put what looks like a transfer box right there, okay? So that way we have a way to transfer from the side to the front. Um, there's some gears that are involved doing this and all that. Um, I'm not going to make them. Uh, you know what? We're going to stop this. I'm going to get these a little bit better out of the way so it looks nicer, okay? But I don't want you to sit here and listen to all the screeching, so hold on. All right, so I've cleaned those off a bit. All 
All right, best thing about model railroading, you don't have to be perfect in some of these things. You just have to be close enough. And that's what we're gonna do here. Okay, so this is where we turn what you would think soldering into welding. So what I'm trying to do is I've got to heat up the, the thing about the soldering in order for all this to work. I have to heat the tube up, and you can see the tube is pretty big. And then I also have to try to keep that thing in place, which is not that easy to do, and also heat it up. And then hopefully between the two of them, I can at least get some sort of tack in there. But I also need to keep the box straight at the same time. So I'm up to about six or seven hands at this point in time, and I just don't have them. And you can see that I had to hold the thing so that it wouldn't slide back. So um, this took quite a bit of time actually to put this one box on. Um, this happens a couple of times. So that's one of the bad things. So again, I probably could have used Sinoacrylic on this, you know, a CA glue. Um, I wasn't sure I was going to get the results that I that I wanted from it and how exactly it would have uh, been able to hold up to the strength. So I decided I would go ahead and take the extra time and do all this, even though it took a while. So, um, like I said, sometimes it's really, really tough to do some of the things that you want to do. And then, of course, it was really tough at the higher temperatures to keep this tip clean. And I realized one of the things I have to do is I've got to get one of those, uh, I don't want to say, uh, kind of like the stainless steel balls or the brass ball to keep the thing clean. It would have been a lot easier. So here I was able to finally get some sort of tack on there. And then since I got the tack on there, then I was able to manipulate this a little bit more. Um, again, cleaning the tip, constantly cleaning the tip to get this to, to be cleaner. Um, so apparently the brass is a little bit dirtier than a lot of the copper and stuff that we normally work with. Okay. Alrighty, that's my box. That's one good thing away. Alright, so I'm going to do some cutting to make some small pieces out of this to make some more of this, okay? Alright, so the next thing that I have to attempt is to take these little pieces here and solder them to this somehow, right? Because what happens is, is this tube kind of goes up here. Oops, sorry. You guys aren't in the light yet. All right, so I bring this a little bit down. This tube kind of goes up there to the motor, all right? This tube will come off of here to meet up with that tube, okay? One of these ends comes this way and then the other one goes off to the motor that goes over there and then this is actually a hanging little thing for the uh, motor to go on. So, lots of little things to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this in speed up mode um, for time lapse because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of words that are said during this. So, that doesn't necessarily have to go on. Alrighty. So, let's get you guys on some wider screen. up a little bit. Okay, so the tiny little pieces proved to be exactly that, a little bit of a pain. Um, holding them on and trying to tighten them down, I really needed some uh, metal sort of uh, clamps or something like that so they could be held in place. This is one of the drive shafts. There's actually a shaft that goes in between the two of them. Uh, those are just the holding guides. The transfer box actually has holds the universal. And then the other one that I had to put on there was a stick to come out to the side that would hold um, the transfer column for the uh, PTO. All right, so let's take a look at this thing now. The only thing I've got left to do, there we go. I gotta put a box on this end to show that there's kind of a transfer box. We've got the transfer shaft, the shaft protector, 
we've got the wheel base we've got the transfer shaft down here another shaft and then this shaft actually hooks up to the pto of a tractor so we got all that in there that's just got to be cleaned up a little bit and then i've got to fabricate some sort of box that goes up on the end here and i believe what's going to happen with that is, is i'm just going to get a piece of wood and make it into a wood piece and this is going to fit in there something like this this will go underneath the track this will have the bed that comes in like that something like that and then this will go in the in the house so there we go um clean up painting oh what was that little thing for okay so this particular little piece right here that i just had the hardest time putting on that one right there when this isn't in use this actually swings and hangs on there so that they can use this um and tow it away and the real one um had i made this a little bit better um i was looking at this this actually goes from here to here and then this goes from here to here there's a little pallet there there's another little bar that goes in here it's kind of a tray that these two arms would sit on that tray there would also be a tray up here which makes these adjustable and then there would be a little crank that changes the angle of this little brace to make this go up or down but this is ho scale hobbying um we just need it to look like it is okay so that's what i got on that we're gonna see what else i can do um to make this look like a transfer box okay thanks all right this looks ugly now but i found another piece of tubing two pieces of tubing actually that are some different sizes so i soldered them up to the end we're gonna get in there we're gonna sand that up we're gonna pretty it up we'll put in some filler material and everything will be good okay so this is ready for sanding polishing priming and painting and it is done so this one took a long time now that i've got this done now i can play with my other portions of it and i've got this moving along so there you go there is an auger screw set the other one i might finish at some point in time but i don't know i might just do something different however with Jack Jack's challenge, it made it a lot different because I couldn't use plastic. This would go together a lot easier. I think you guys can really see how easy something like this can be done in plastic. Um, the soldering made it a lot tougher. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, again, this is just another part of the build. Okay, so this is kind of the follow. You can see I cleaned it up a little bit, got some brass done on it and all. Um, and this is what it looks like. This is Steve87 saying thanks for watching. And if you like this, please subscribe, give, leave a like, and leave a comment.